The war will end on Sunday. This is the surprising news that on Sunday the 3rd of October 2010, the First World War will have officially ended when Germany has paid the last of our war reparations. It began at the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, when a sum of 226 billion Reichsmarks was determined as the sum that Germany would have to pay back. It was later reduced to 132 billion Reichsmarks, which was £22 billion at the time. This agreement in 1919, coupled with the Wall Street crash in 1929, led to the rise of the Nazi party and Hitler as chairman, and during his leadership, the war reparations were not being repaid. In student news, Lord Brown has proposed an increase in tuition fees from £3,290 to £7,000, with a possible extra £3,000 if the universities want to risk a loan of that size. There is also wind of high-earning graduates paying an extra premium. This is all in a bid to reduce the amount the Treasury is subsidising the education system. Not only does this put financial pressure on the universities and students, it also adds political pressure to the new coalition government. Julian Hubbard, Liberal Democrat MP for Cambridge, said that he would vote to scrap university fees, whatever they may be called. While Ed Miliband, the new Labour leader, is in favour of a graduate tax that would replace university fees. This would mean that our income from a job not necessarily to do with the degree we have studied is going to be taxed to repay the university for our education. As it stands, this is a slippery slope, because we do not know whether the tax will be a flat sum, a percentage of our gross income, or scaled to fit with our cost of living. We also do not know how long it would last. It would be incredibly unfair to students if we end up paying ten times the amount because of this graduate tax. However, it would make the cost of living at university cheaper in the short term. The National Union of Students NUS, are in favour of a graduate tax if there are to be hikes in the university fees. NUS President Aaron Porter said, A graduate tax is preferable to a market-based system of fees. We are keen to work with the government. If there are more tuition fee rises, there could be seismic backlash. Further detail of this plan is crucial to ensure that the system is truly a progressive alternative and not simply tuition fees by another name. However, the Russell Group of UK Universities is against graduate tax as proposed by the government. Director General Wendy Pyatt said, We are particularly concerned that it will be many years before revenue from a graduate tax becomes available, so until then there would be a requirement for a major upfront investment in universities by government, a very costly solution. There are other parties for and against graduate tax, and these can be found in the links below. We cannot forget that this whole debate is purely to do with university fees, not accommodation and not cost of living. Therefore, a student will still be thousands of pounds in debt with or without the graduate tax. Following on from this, a report has shown that the demand for university places would not be affected by an increase in tuition fees, with only 10% of students saying that they would not attend, although students from less well-off families would be unlikely to be able to afford the increased university fees. The only solution, aside from graduate tax, is to increase loan sizes and grants, which in theory would cancel out any advantages the university would gain from increasing tuition fees. The only body to benefit from this is the government, because they would have to subsidise less. Maybe it's a good thing, maybe it isn't when factored in with all the other things mentioned, but it stands to reason that the universities and students would suffer from an increase to fees. We will have to sit tight and see where this goes, although a graduate tax is looking ever more likely. From the ridiculous to the ridiculous, Apple has filed a lawsuit against technology firm Sector Labs for the right to use the word pod, after Sector Labs invented a projector called the video pod. Not only would this prevent Sector Labs from using the word pod, it would prevent all companies everywhere from using it. Anna Christian, the lawyer for Sector Labs, said, What I'm hoping to do with this case is to really reach a lot broader an audience and make it so entrepreneurs and small businesses can use the English language as they see fit in branding their products. In related news, medical students at the University of Leeds are being given iPhones. This is due to their ability to access online textbooks. Unfortunately for the student, they will have to hand them back after they graduate. Is this the start of the technological revolution in education? Or will this prove to be a barrier to education as the answers are there at your fingertips and will require no learning? Tell me what you think about any of the stories mentioned today. What are your views on increasing tuition fees? What do you think about the graduate tax? Are iPhones the way forward for education? Were you as surprised to learn that the First World War will end on Sunday as I was? Send me a comment or a video response and let me know. Thank you for watching. This has been a Study Guys production. He's proposed the minimum be £7,000 with an optional £3,000 if the universities will risk it.